Grand Prix means the ultimate portrayal of high performance. For every era, the form of that portrayal is new. Monuments like the unforgettable Juan Manuel Fangio and his racing boss Alfred Neubauer tower from the depths of the Mercedes tradition. The veiling of the last silver arrow took place 43 tearful years ago as reigning world champion. So the longing for fresh silver had time to grow and grow strong. David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen unveiled the first silver arrow of the modern age in February 1997. One year later, its successor, the McLaren MP413, was given the OK for its first rollout in Barcelona. Yes, it had become more powerful and faster, and in a word, better. Behind that was the whole drama of creativity with all its wonders and magic. A competitive society which can imagine what thousands of a second mean and wishes to be measured in those terms can only function through global partnership. Bridgestone has researched and developed the most complex tyre technology since the invention of the wheel. At McLaren, Adrian Newey and his team constructed the new car and Mario Illion had thought out the new Mercedes V10. Whether or not the new package could do what everyone hoped of it had yet to be demonstrated. Tests and first training runs are about harmonizing the various parts of this work of art. Perfecting Formula One technology means balancing the complexity of the whole. Predictable and unpredictable variables mingle until they become indistinguishable. On the next track, in different weather or on another surface, everything looks quite different. Above all, you need two supremely sensitive drivers at your side who have supernatural talents and technical instincts. It doesn't do any harm if the pilots get some on-site info, for example, in the new Mercedes Motorworks in Bad Cannstatt. Practical knowledge is never wasted, and the Schwabian colleagues are clearly enjoying the experience too. Racing mechanics are the backstage artists in Formula One. The high art of the spanner is one whose working schedules are endlessly flexible. The main part of the performance takes place in seclusion, like the night before race day, when the car is completely taken apart and rebuilt anew. Pit stops can decide a race. The spotlight shines on the mechanics 16 Sundays a year, where their experience is accelerated by their adrenaline. Race day brings out the contrast between a resting pulse and a fast heartbeat, as nothing else can.
pit stop is a concert at Tempo Prestissimo, put on at weekends, just like when a band goes on tour. A group can improvise, but here every movement must be in the right place at the right time. It's a cannonball number with 36 hands, but not one movement is hurried. They almost seem to act in slow motion, until six to eight seconds later, it's all over. Only your competitors can show you how well you worked over the winter. First comparisons were almost too flattering. David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen won four of the first five races at the start of the season. Australia, Brazil, Imola, and the most prestigious Grand Prix of all, Monaco. Floating on the silver cloud of a Monaco victory, Mika and Eria get married. A race-free weekend becomes the Grand Prix of Helsinki. But instead of a honeymoon with Eria, Mika is off to a less than comfortable ride to the limit with his colleague, David. Qualifying that magical word. Start positions have become vastly important due to the equality of the field and the difficulty of overtaking. Driving Saturday's qualifying hour is like entering some higher state of being. Everyone gathered round the track can feel it in mind and body, experiencing it as a compression of time and space. The last chaotic laps are the final display of willpower, the ultimate in racing sport. Ritual is always the same. You have four attempts, inching your way forward, reaching for an ideal lap. Even though the car is well tuned already, there is still room for adjustments which might whittle down the decisive thousandths of a second. The balancing act is most tricky in Monaco because of the delicate work between curbs and hotels, between crash barriers and casino. We try to follow Mika Hakkinen as fast as we can. From the starting straight into the Santa Vota curve, then it's foot to the floor up the hill. What looks like a straight isn't one at 260 kph. A bump lifts your stomach. The slippery left-hand bend narrows, forcing you over to the crash barrier. The whole casino section is a question of rhythm. You get catapulted downhill to do some super braking at the upper mirror. 
Threading your way into the railway station hairpin, you give a stab of the accelerator to the lower Mirabeau and a short roar up to the coastal right-hand bend, setting yourself up to plunge into the tunnel at up to 280 kilometres per hour. Out into the open again, you aim for the entrance to the chicane and then shoot out at full power till you have to break it to Buck's Corner. The fast snake bends at the harbour rockets you in the direction of the Raskas curve. Then it's twice to the right and full power towards the start and finishing line. 119798 comes over the radio, the priceless pole position in Monaco. Whoever can stand the uncanny stress of this sport must also be a master of relaxation. From time to time, you have to be up to the partying, too. the middle of the season the drama is building up. That is the best way you can say about three defeats in a row. The confrontation between Hakanen and Michael Schumacher is coming to a head. Emotions are at the boil. ring in Austria, Mika comes through with a strong showing. David closing up for a double victory. Grand Prix is on the move again. The trail of the high-tech nomads circles the globe and crisscrosses Europe. The change from the mechanical to the electronic age can be read in the styling of race transport over the decades. Tremendous logistics are needed to move today's requisite high-tech gear. Bus and lorry drivers have to really like travelling. Moving and resettling for the next race happen in the speeded up tempo of Formula One itself. In the wake of this wandering circus is a million-strong audience as colourful as the show itself. The fans are inventive in their choice of living quarters and garb. They lend this technical sport colour and atmosphere and are part of the whole artwork of performers, spectators, scenery and the excitement of a race afternoon. In spite of the fabulous number of TV viewers, the fans are closer to the action and their emotions at the track let it come alive. In this arena of good vibrations, Mercedes presents cars which make the heart beat faster. Highlights on days like these are the historic Silver Arrows or the unique McLaren two-seater providing adrenaline for the passengers.
the year's drama gallard, becoming a cinematic showdown with two character roles, played by Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher. They are both at the peak of their abilities. They are cool. They cannot be defined in terms of German or Finn. Attempts to characterize them as the blonde from the north or the computer kid from the go-kart track are inadequate. They are simply two greats in a world championship final that can stand comparison with the finest in motorsports parts. Behind them are the most prestigious racing teams of the new age, the red Ferraris and the silver arrows of West McLaren Mercedes. It is the opponent's sheer class which has raced the final at Suzuka to the dimension that makes a win not just valuable, but noble. For West McLaren Mercedes, it is to become the ninth victory of the season. is standard bearer Mika Hakkinen, shedding radiance on the team effort. Mika, West McLaren and Mercedes, the world champions. This is the victory of teamwork, of people who for years have believed in an idea, a common goal. They have done everything to make it a reality with the enthusiasm of racing hearts.